Cyberpunk 2077 has its fair share of Easter eggs, and if you didn't know, with the Phantom Liberty expansion, there is actually a John Wick reference at one of the new weapon vendors. And since Keanu Reeves plays both John Wick and the legend Johnny Silverhand in Cyberpunk, I figured this would be the perfect time to create some John Wick builds. The two that I'm going to give you are going to be different in regards to playstyle. One is going to be pretty much going loud. The enemy's going to hear you, see you. You're going to have combat immediately. And the second one is going to take more of a silent approach, the assassin approach. What I wanted to know diving into this is what weapons did John Wick use in the films? And there is a very extensive list of what all weapons he used. But I've broke it down to four categories of just the main weapon types that we can apply to cyberpunk. Now note, I will be talking about mainly iconic weapons that can be earned in the main game and the Phantom Liberty expansion, so keep that in mind. If you are just starting the game, again, work with what you've got. There are plenty of weapons in the game and stuff that you can't upgrade along the way, but this is pretty much for the end game. I will tell you how to get some of these iconic weapons, but for some, I don't want to spoil too much just because of story. If you haven't played the game yet, I definitely want to let you experience it firsthand for yourself. If you want to figure out how to get these iconics, definitely Google it. The first category we're going to talk about is pistols. There are a variety of pistols that John Wick uses in the films and a lot of solid ones that we can take advantage of in Cyberpunk. So let's talk about a few that I would recommend. First up being Her Majesty. Again, this is a Phantom Liberty exclusive, so keep that in mind. This is going to be really good for those of you who want to take advantage of the silent build, but while optical camo is active, this weapon shots gain perfect accuracy and guaranteed headshot crits along with increased damage. As if that weren't enough, it comes with a unique silencer. This is pretty much the unity, but on crack. The next one I'm going to talk about is the Congo. This can be obtained through the heist mission. If you go over to Yorinoba's bed, you can actually just pick up the pistol. So it can be easy to miss, but it's also very easy to pick up. Definitely grab it. So thanks to the highest grade mods, the user could take advantage of ricochet technology, even if they don't possess the required cyberware. This pretty much comes with the ballistic compressor cyberware on the weapon. So you can't take advantage of that. Reduce recoil, increase rate of fire, make up for the smaller magazine size. It's as deadly as it is elegant. It's pretty much a faster firing Liberty pistol. The next I would recommend is Jackie's pistol. I'm not going to tell you how to get it because there are some pretty crazy story implications. Definitely Google it if you don't know how to get it. But Every headshot temporarily increases crit damage and burn chance. The next time you equip the pistol, you gain extra ammo equal to the number of headshots. Obviously, I had to include Johnny's pistol, the Malorian Arms. This thing is just so solid across the board, has really good headshot damage multiplier with the plus 150% and comes with a great armor penetration of plus 50%. Not a lot of pistols can come with both of these things rolled on it. Again, it used to be very weak before 2.0, but now that it's upgradable, they improve the perks, this thing is a beast. The last pistol I'd recommend is the Seraph. It does fire explosive rounds, so I would recommend using this specifically for the loud build, you know, not the silence build. So each subsequent hit increases the chance that your enemy will be consumed by the purifying flame of the Seraphim. Once burning, bullets deal increased damage to the enemy. If you want to focus on pistol perks, come under the cool section and look on the left column. These are all for pistols and revolvers, other sniper rifles, precision rifles, stuff like that. But the main thing is maxing out focus here so we get the no stamina cost for shooting for a short duration. And then we have no sweat, rinse and reload, and then head to head. You do not need deep breath for the slow time. It's really not necessary uh, definitely do not do pull because whenever you throw a grenade you can shoot it out of the air but it auto tracks to it and we definitely don't want that for any of these builds in particular definitely max out deadeye because of the increase to headshot and weak spot damage and less stamina cost for shooting we also have california reaper with high noon and long shot if you want to put on quick draw totally do so it's not absolutely necessary though and then lastly the run and gun hit firing does not consume stamina when focus is active plus 25 percent movement speed so in general it just makes pistols really good. The next category of weapons I want to focus on is assault rifles. John Wick uses a variety of ARs in the game, even things like marksman rifles, things that are semi-auto. So let's go over a few. First up being Carmen. Again, this is a Phantom Liberty exclusive, so keep that in mind. Arms and legs, who needs them? Shots to limbs have increased crit chance, weapon handling, and improved while running, jumping, or sliding, and simultaneously increases damage and bleeding. Pretty much, this is going to be really good for the run and gun. Next, let's talk about the Hawk. This is President Meyer's AR. Again, this is semi-auto. It's a Phantom Liberty only weapon, so keep those things in mind. Headshots temporarily weaken and mark enemies. In this weakened state, enemies move slower, cannot use abilities, deal less damage, and are more prone to losing their balance. 
pretty much you shoot the enemy and they get discombobulated. Next up is the QBX Mod 2. Again, it is the same model as the Hawk. This is pretty much the upgraded version of the QB. It just allows for more modification slots. As you can see, I can put on a sight, a barrel modification, and two mods on this thing. And it's just absolutely disgusting. I would recommend getting it. Google on how to get it. It's kind of hilarious, but it's very, very easy. Next up on the list is the Pitbull. Now, note if you're watching this right now, go over to Twitch. If you have Twitch Prime, Prime Gaming, this is how you get this iconic. It's not from in the game. It's from a code that you get through Prime Gaming to apply to your account to get the weapon. So if you're watching it right now, definitely go over to Twitch. If you're watching this video late, it's been a couple weeks, you might be too late, but this thing is absolutely disgusting. So unleash the power of the pack. Gain increased movement speed on kills and dismemberments. The faster you move, the more damage you deal. Vargas weapons also gain increased armor penetration. So as long as you are moving with this AR, you're going to have that free increased damage. Now, the last one I'm going to mention is the Psalm 11.6. This is a main game iconic and it actually comes from a blueprint that you can pick up. Definitely Google on how to get this because I totally forget. I've played this game way too long, but <laughs> fiery coals and sulfur will rain down upon sinners. Turn your enemies into smoldering heap of something. So pretty much applies a heavy burn chance with this AR. If you want bonuses to assault rifles, go under reflexes and you're going to want the left column perks here. Definitely recommend ready, rested, and reloaded, plus tunnel vision, spice of life, and mind over matter. These are just general bonuses to ARs and SMGs. Next, definitely max out sharpshooter here so you can get access to shoot to chill, plus practice makes perfect. If you want to put on spray and play, again, it's going to reduce the stamina cost when you're shooting, uh, when you're hip firing. I didn't find it absolutely necessary here. You can do Gun Dancer if you'd like, mainly because aiming no longer slows movement speed. The other thing allows you to shoot while vaulting. Again, you can already do that with Multitasker, so you don't need Gun Dancer on. And then obviously, the big one, which is Salt in the Wound. Shooting the same target a seventh consecutive time deals bonus damage equal to 100% of the total damage from the preceding shots. The next category we're going to talk about are shotguns. Now, there are a variety of shotguns, especially Iconics in the game, but mostly throughout the films, he uses pump shotguns. So I'm going to cover a couple of them here. No, every single one of these can be obtained through the main game. So you don't have to have Phantom Liberty for it. First up, we have Bloody Maria. Increases knockdown and bleeding and dismemberment chance. Enemies deprived of their limbs increase your reload speed and crit chance. In other words, it's going to be a mess. Next up is Rebecca's Shotgun Guts. If you have seen Cyberpunk Edge Runners, you definitely want to pick up this shotgun. It is in Corporal Plaza. If you want a very detailed breakdown on how to get it, it's very easy. You can just walk up and pick it up, but it is at a specific location. Definitely Google it. So heavy weapon slightly reduces movement speed and jump height. Keep those things in mind. Let the lead fly. Shoot faster, deal more damage, accuracy be damned. Just don't shoot your eye out. Very, <laughs> very reminiscent of Rebecca. Next up, we have Mox. Again, this is Judy's shotgun you can get through her story quest. Again, if you want more information, definitely Google it yourself. But improves accuracy by changing a regular pellet spread into a more uniform predictable pattern. Judy's mods give the shotgun extra lightness and precision. When enemies are close, your shock and knockdown chance are increased. Last one I'm going to talk about is the Headsman. Again, this can be crafted. It actually comes from a blueprint. If you want to look up how to get it, definitely do so. But fires a single round instead of pellet. So this is more like a slug shotgun. So coupled with the unique scope, this shotgun gains ridiculous accuracy for its range. Headshots momentarily increase real speed and accuracy. And a subsequent headshot deals crit damage. For shotgun bonuses, you're going to want to come under body here and hit the left side. So first up, we have die, die, die. Again, as you can see, that is Rebecca there. You definitely want that. And then we have Like a Feather, Don't Stop Me Now, and then Bullet Ballet, just giving general improvements to shotguns. And then the big one here, which is Spontaneous Obliteration. So it unlocks Obliterate, the ability to sometimes instantly kill and dismember enemies at low health. It just completely drops them, which is nuts. I do like Close Quarters Carnage, Skull Cracker, Dread, and Rush of Blood. All these perks are very good. And then lastly, we have Rip and Tear. This one's not absolutely necessary, but it's kind of unique. So... You get 100% damage for the next quick melee attack after shooting an enemy with a shotgun and plus 100% damage for the next shotgun shot after hitting an enemy with a quick melee attack. So if you're close quarters anyway, you shoot a target, melee them, and then shoot them again, you can pretty much have this change off of having increased damage for the melee portion and the shotgun portion. Last category I want to talk about are knives. As we know, John Wick is very good at close quarters combat and there are a variety of just knives in the game. 
including Iconics. Again, we have Blue Fang here. We have Fang from Phantom Liberty. We have the Nihon. We have Stinger. But the main one I would get is Headhunter. You can actually pick this one up at the melee weapon vendor in Pacifica. You just buy it from them. It's honestly the best knife in the game. The reason being, let's go over the flavor text, right? Marks enemy on hit. That's not even the good part. Attacking the enemy's head with any weapon deals 200% damage, returns the headhunter, and clears the mark. So you get increased headshot damage with every weapon now if you just have this knife equipped. If you want bonuses to knives, come under cool and you're going to want to hit up the right column over here. The bottom is for silent stuff, so you can kind of ignore that for now. But for knives specifically, you want Scorpion Sting maxed out with Parasite and then Corrosion. If you want to put on Neurotoxin and Accelerated Toxin Absorption, it helps poison stuff, but it's not absolutely necessary. Juggler is a big one here because it's an instant cooldown reset for all throwable weapons after neutralizing an enemy with a throwable weapon via headshot, crit hit, or poison. So you get the knife back pretty much instantaneously. We also have pay it forward, which whenever you retrieve a knife, again, you can do it with juggler. It gains plus 200% damage, which is nuts. We have the knife finisher. You can do that one. If you want to do pounce so you can have the longer range for the finisher that's fine and then sleight of hand this is great plus 20 percent crit damage whenever juggler is activated and can stack up to five times if you're going with a silent build i'll cover this stuff later you can get style over substance for the guaranteed crit hits with throwable weapons when crowd sprinting sliding dodging or dashing and there is no movement speed penalty when aiming a throwable weapon now let's talk about how i distributed my attribute points and some general perks you're going to want for a john wick build first let's talk about body i just left it at 18 because i'm not going to be taking advantage of rip and tear but at level 15 i definitely want to take advantage of these shotgun perks if i decide to put on a shotgun and that leads me over to the middle column here which is all about health regen and again we definitely want level 15 to take advantage of the perks up here so definitely put on painkiller with combat kid speed junkie and army one these are the basic health regen perks you don't need dwarf head because we're not going to be using the blood pump cyborg but you definitely want to max out adrenaline rush to level three so whenever you use a you know, health item, it gives you bonus health, which is very, very nice. And when Adrenaline Rush is active, we do get some bonuses from these perks, like Unstoppable Force, Immunity to Knockdown Blinding, which is broken. When Adrenaline Rush is active, increase movement speed and damage, and then Calm Mind. There's a three second delay before your adrenaline starts to decay. You definitely want these perks here. With Reflexes, I maxed it out to level 20. Obviously, I have the Assault Rifle bonuses over here, but the middle column is all about movement. Now, you can honestly mess with a lot of these. Again, unlocking Slippery is the main thing, and then unlocking Dash, and then getting the Air Dash. You can dash in midair for that bonus movement. That is going to be really necessary. I do also like Multitasker, Muscle Memory, and Parkour. You can also put on Power Slide if you would like. Again, being able to reload and shoot while you're vaulting, sliding, doing all those things is going to be very handy, but you can kind of play around with the rest of these movement speed, movement tech type perks, but there's not a specific one that you need. But note, with level 20, you do get plus 25% stamina from performing air dashes and double jumps, and air dashes do not consume stamina. Under technical ability, we maxed it out to level 20 to have those really good bonuses to our cyberware. So, Obviously, you want all things Cyber, Chrome Constitution, Renaissance Punk, Driver Update, and Lucky Day, so you get those increased crafting components. But you can take off Lucky Day and put on Chip Connoisseur when you are upgrading your Cyberware, because this is going to give you two other options when upgrading your Cyberware to really cater your build. Highly recommend doing this before upgrading Cyberware, especially past Tier 3. So whenever you're done, you can take it off and put it back on Lucky Day. Again, max out License to Chrome, mainly because you do get the extra slot to your skeleton cyborg plus ambidextrous does the same thing now we have two slots for our hands also cyborg and extended warranty you don't need build difference since we are not using the cellular adapter cyborg and then lastly edge runner obviously as you can tell it's david martinez here but allows you to exceed your cyborg capacity by up to 50 points at the cost of minus 0.5 percent max health per point when you neutralize an enemy during combat there is a 0.1 percent chance for each point your over capacity that you will enter the fury state in this state you will gain plus 10 percent damage 30 percent crit chance and 50 percent crit damage this perk is very good and the laughing is hysterical and a little bit creepy under cool i maxed out the level 20 so we can obviously take advantage of the pistol and throwing knife perks here but we also have the middle column here for stealth and the bottom right 
stuff for stealth as well, which I will talk about during the stealth cyberware. And then lastly, under the relic skill tree, I would recommend maxing out these bottom ones first. Again, if you are gonna be going in loud, definitely recommend vulnerability analytics so you can take advantage of the vulnerabilities on enemies. Again, increased crit chance, armor penetration, and weak spot damage bonuses. If you shoot it, it explodes in an EMP, which can damage enemies around it. And then it also has this bonus of machine learning, which increases the chance of more vulnerabilities appearing and increases your crit damage that can stack up to five times and when it reaches the max stack it doubles the effects if you want to take more of the stealthy route you definitely want to get emergency cloaking here so it basically just improves the uses of optical camo but you do have to have the cyborg on to take advantage of it and then it's bonus sensory protocol which is pretty much the synaptic accelerator cyberware but you don't need it when crouch becoming detected by an enemy will temporarily slow down <laughs> dodge or dash out of the enemy's line of sight to immediately exit combat so this is going to be really good here and as we know john wick is great at hand-to-hand -hand combat so we're going to be using the gorilla arms cyberware so under the relic skill tree again you can get jailbreak which gives us bonuses to all the arm cyberware for gorilla arms specifically allows you to do massive damage and create a shockwave and then you can also get the limited removal which the shockwave from the gorilla arms now knocks down all enemies within its range pretty much just major bonuses to the grill arms next let's go over what cyber i'm using for both builds first starting with the go loud build the assault specific build now there's going to be some crossover with a lot of the cyberware here but the main thing to note under the operating system is that we're using the new iconic the chrome compressor versus something like the sandy the cyberdeck or berserk this costs zero on our cyberware and just gives us a straight bonus to our cyberware capacity like john wick does not have a sandy on or anything like that so we kind of have to make it a little realistic but that means we can also put on a lot of other iconic cyberware first thing i want to talk about is the kresnikov since we don't have a sandy to slow down time we might as well use this but if you aim a range attack while you are sliding dodging or dashing it will slow down time for a couple of seconds so this can come in handy when in combat situations and there is some cyberware that gives bonuses to it, like the Kresnikov boost system on the frontal cortex here. So when it's active, you get a minus 100% stamina cost from shooting and slows time by 17% relative to your enemies. So this means you can shoot a little bit faster than your enemies can, which can be good. And then under the integumentary system, you want the Defeznikov. So <laughs> I don't know if I pronounced that right, but whatever. So when the Kresnikov ends, you get a plus 90% mitigation chance for four seconds again this is tier 5 plus so keep that in mind mitigation grants a chance to reduce incoming damage by current mitigation strength so pretty much we take less damage coming out of the Kresnikov. for our other cyber under the frontal cortex we are using self eye so we can negate an enemy quick hack and then also mechatronic core so we can do more damage to drones robots mechs and turrets under the arms like i mentioned i am using grill arms and note there is a passive bonus to your body attribute which is good so at tier 3 it's a plus 2 at tier four, it's a plus four. And at tier five, as you can see, it's a plus six to the body attribute. And since my body is only at 18, I can't open up every door in the game if it's above like level 18. So if there's a level 20 door, which there are level 20 doors in the game with the grill arm cyberware, I can pretty much open every door in the game now. Under the skeleton, I am going with bionic joints. So I get the bonus to armor. Next, the epimorphic skeleton. So I get bonuses to my maximum health. Then lastly, the iconic version of the Parabellum, which is the Ra Ra Avis, pretty much gives a percentage bonus to my armor. This one's a lot higher than the regular, but also costs more on the cyberware. Under the nervous system, I am using the iconic version of the Adrenaline Converter, which is the Adreno Trigger, plus 30% movement speed for 60 seconds when entering combat versus only seven seconds. You do get more movement speed, but it lasts way less time. And then the iconic version of the visual cortex support the deep field visual interface which crit chance increases the farther you are from the enemy max up to 92 percent bonus at 95 meters so it's it's pretty much a free increase to crit chance the farther away you are now other integumentary system ones we are using the subdermal armor for the bonus to armor simple and effective and then i do like chitin so it's an extremely durable subcutaneous shell made of genetically modified chitin provides additional health regen so on top of giving a good amount of armor you do get health regen with this if you did want to use something like pain editor or proxy shield or the iconic version which is peripheral inverse you can totally do so i just like this combo for optics, we are going to be using the iconic cockatrice optics, which gives us an increase to our crit chance by 
35%. I do like these ones. If you don't care about that, you could go with the Oracle, which highlights enemies through walls, highlights cameras and turrets, and highlights explosives, but I do highly recommend the Cockatrice. Under my hands, I do personally like Shock Absorber for the minus two recoil, and also a movable force, which helps with recoil and bullet spread. So it's pretty much gonna make all your weapons extremely accurate. Under the circulatory system, I like heal on kill. So whenever I neutralize an enemy, I get health back. <clears throat> Under the circulatory system, I personally like heal on kill. So I get health back whenever I neutralize an enemy. Biomonitor. So it automatically heals you with your equipped health item when your health drops below 35%. Again, John Wick is a survivor. And we definitely don't want to have to go through the time of using the animation of the, you know, equipped health item if we can just pop it right there automatically when our health gets low. And then lastly, we have clutch padding, which is a stamina cost reduction for shooting. And lastly, for our legs, to be lore accurate, I am personally using the Leroy ligament system. These are iconic legs. It's just a straight bonus to movement speed. So John Wick is fast, and we definitely want to take advantage of that with this build. Now, since we're immediately going to be in combat with the Go Loud build, there's going to be no need for any of these silent style perks. You won't have access to the style over substance, but that's not a huge deal with this. But that means we can pour some of our perks into the left technical tree, which is bonuses to our health items and our grenades as well. With the Go Loud build, again, John Wick, you know, grenades aren't like a staple or anything like that. But since we have access to the slot, we might as well take advantage of it. So you can use any grenade that you would like here. And just note, you can also focus some stuff here on the assault rifle sides, SMG side, and the reflexes. You can max out some of these perks as well. And you have access to this one that merges the two, which is the Air Kereznikov. So if you activate it, while you're midair, it'll keep you suspended and extend its duration. So there are these like small bonuses with some of the perks. For the gold loud weapon setup, I do like the headhunter only because you do get the bonus to headshot damage with other weapons on top of it. So even if you don't use a knife, your other weapons do get that bonus. Again, Johnny's pistol is hard to put down now. This thing hits like a truck, but like the other weapons that I mentioned, you could totally use. And I personally like the Pitbull Iconic because the main thing is that, you know, gain increased movement speed on kills and dismemberment. So not only are you going to be moving faster on every kill, the faster you move, the more damage you do with the weapon. It's very good for this go loud style build. Now let's talk about what cyber we're using for the silence build. Now under the frontal cortex, I am using the axolotl because whenever you neutralize an enemy, you get a huge cooldown to your cyborg. Now, the main reason for this is because under the integumentary system, we are going to be taking advantage of optical camo and with tier five plus plus minus 90% visibility of enemies for seven seconds. And the cooldown is 50 seconds. So the problem here is that once optical camo runs out, you can't use it again until it is fully charged. And if we can continue to get kills with axolotl with or without being noticed, we can activate optical camo again and take advantage of bonuses under our perks. Under my arm cyborg, I'm keeping the gorilla arms, and then on our skeleton, I'm still using the bionic joints and epimorphic skeleton, but I'm also using dense morrow. So I do get increased melee damage at the cost of having an increased stamina cost whenever I use a melee. This includes, you know, throwable melee weapons such as the knives we are going to take advantage of. Under the nervous system, we are still using the deep field visual interface, but we decided to put on the tyrosine injector. So after a successful takedown, I get increased headshot damage and movement speed plus stabber plus 20% crit chance with blades and throwable weapons. And then for everything else, we're still using the same thing. Under the integumentary system, chitin and subdermal armor. Under operating system, chrome compressor. For optics, the cockatrice. For hands, shock absorber and immovable force. For circulatory system, heal on kill, biomonitor, and then clutch padding. And then for legs, the Leroy ligament system. And like I mentioned, for a silenced, you know, gameplay silenced build, you definitely want some of these perks under cool here in the bottom right these are all important killer instinct pretty much increased damage from knives axes and silence weapons when you're outside of combat quick getaway increased movement speed after you neutralize a target and then gag order landing an attack on an enemy right after they detect you will delay detection from other nearby enemies pretty much gives you some leeway if you want to stay undetected i would recommend feline footwork only because you can unlock the crouch sprinting with ninjutsu and also the obviously the max uh, perk for knives and silence the mix the silence over substance and I would recommend minimally putting on creeping death the reason being is because when optical camo is active and you are undetected neutralizing an enemy grants more health plus stamina and movement speed for my silence build weapon setup I personally like having the headhunter 
with the Her Majesty pistol. And then lastly, the QBX Mod 2 modded out with a scope for longer range, a silencer, obviously. And then I like the equalizer so I can do more damage to elite targets and also have the decrease to my recoil with the Ready Steady mod. But that, ladies and gentlemen, are both of my John Wick builds again there are so many options with this game there's multiple weapons you can choose from there's multiple perks you can play around with there is a lot of interchangeability with that and that even includes cyborg as well the cyborg that i was using is not set in stone it was just stuff that worked out really well for me with these builds definitely play around with it for yourself and let me know what you guys think in the comments if you like using something specific for this build definitely let me know. In any event, if what you saw was valuable or entertaining to you, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then turn on the bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on any other build videos here on the channel. If you didn't know, we do live stream here on YouTube on the channel three days a week, mostly in the evenings. Again, I mainly play Destiny 2 and Cyberpunk, so if you do want to hop in the stream and hang out, please do so. And if we are running Destiny 2 and we're doing activities together like PvE, PvP, you know, raid carries, dungeon carries, anything like that, again, you can always hop in my Discord. Discord. That link will also be in the description. Again, people are looking to play games together, talk about games, you know, PC tech, anime, and more. Lastly, if you want to support the channel even more, you can look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it's essentially like a Twitch subscription. Again, you're going to get access to the exclusive emotes, the monthly badges, and other cool stuff here on the channel for cheaper than what is a Twitch subscription, hilariously enough. My tier one is cheaper than a regular tier one thing on Twitch. But if you would like more information, all you have to do is press the join button next subscribe and I'll give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.